Welcome to Muscle Science for Women. We're your cool, fun, knowledgeable hosts, Ashley and Rachel. We're cool and fun. Oh my gosh. I love how you always are so good at like actually introducing the podcast. Like you say the name of it and I'm just like, hey, what's up? I mean, I would say about 50% of the time we completely forget to do an intro. So, you know, I'm- You're good at it though. I'm just like, I try my best. recording. I try my best. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so we're coming into this real hot, not exactly real fresh. Hot. I would say not fresh because it's kind of almost nearing dinner time for me and it's been an, a stressful week. So I said, like, let's just record. Let's not do any like off recording chat and just see where this goes. Um, <laughs> but this week, my son is going to part time preschool for the first time which is basically like two hours a day, three days a week, which to me is like, oh my goodness, two hours a day that I get to Mm -hmm. be productive or do stuff, which is amazing. And I'm really excited for him to like play with other kids and just have a bit more of an expanded world. But he is too, and he is incredibly attached to me right now. And so it's been pretty miserable. Like we're basically just dropping him off and he kind of just like screams for two hours and then we pick him up, which is really stressful for everyone involved. Um, It's only been two days. So I'm giving it, I'm obviously we have to give it some time and he's not, the good thing is he's not like, I don't think he's traumatized by this process because as soon as I pick him up, he's like telling me stories about what happened um, and he talks a lot. So it's good that I can like, he can tell me what's going on, which is I'm very fortunate because not a lot of two-year-olds are like, he's just talking full sentences now. So I can like yeah. ask him how his day was and stuff. But um, it's weird That's because cool. it's great, but it's like, it's this weird, you know, I think one of the things you learn as parent, uh, it, you know, as a parent and like parents listening, I hope can back me up on this, but there's like no right or wrong thing to do really within reason when it comes to parenting. It's like what works for you, but there are sort of, good and bad outcomes to like every decision you make. And so my decision to like be home and be mostly with him for the entire first two years of his life, because I was fortunate and flexible enough to do that. Like I know a lot of people who have to go back to work full time three months after or less, or, you know, they have to put their kid in daycare when they're six months. I didn't have to do that. And I got to spend a lot more time with him. It was really great. But now I'm putting him in daycare when he is, too young to kind of be okay with it, but old enough to like know what the heck is going on and like hate it. So I'm like, <laughs> I want this is sort of backfiring and oops. But anyway, I have been talking to I a feel lot like, of yeah, yeah. No, go ahead, tell me. No, I was just saying, I feel like he's gonna like make friends like yes. within a week, and then next week you're gonna be thinking back to like, oh, it's fine. He'll be I, fine. I hope it's that quick. I mean. I, I've been talking to a lot of other friends who are all like, yeah, there's always kind of a rough period and sometimes it's worse. And it's funny because I talked to Alex and his mom and he's like, I, she is like, I had to pull you out of like two daycares because you screamed too much and wouldn't let me leave you. And I'm like, and Alex, you oh. turned out okay, didn't you? <laughs> like, you're not traumatized. You ended up finally being able to like go do things with your life. So I'm pretty sure he'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but and it's just, not like you really um, remember, like, I don't remember. Two. Pre-K, yeah. Maybe like. Uh, like I have like maybe two memories of like things that stood out, but he's outside right now. He's outside because he's with his grandfather and he's outside (laughs) right now. And so I'm going to hear him like screaming and he might try to come in. We'll see. But it's so, it's so tough too, because it's like, I'm doing this to get more time to work and be my own human being. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but the whole time I'm like worried about him. And then I'm in here recording and he's like in another room screaming, I need my mommy. And like, it's very like the, the stressful the time that I get is not really the time that I was hoping yeah. for. But anyway, um, all that to say it's, it's a new milestone. And I agree with you. I think like once he gets used to the concept and once he knows, like, I'm going to come and get you every day, I will not leave you. I think he'll probably yeah. like, be class president in a month because like I said, he's a, <laughs> he's a talker and he loves to sing and he loves to do all this stuff. So I think he'll, he'll do it. It's just, it's a process this week. So I've been very flustered this week. I've been trying to do um, the best I can, but that's, what's going on in my neck of the woods. How that's about you? Lot. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, it is um, a lot, but I'm sure it'll get better. It'll, yeah. I feel like it can only go up. 
Yeah. I mean, I guess right? technically like, it... it could get worse, but uh, it, yeah, I think we're starting here and we're going to just like work our way up. And, the, and, you know, the key thing, I think with any like interpersonal interaction and relationship, it's like, you got to try to like be calm and be positive and like, cause the only thing that's going to make it worse is like you freaking out too. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I do think it's going to be good for everybody or I wouldn't be doing it cause I don't need to put him in daycare. I mean, I think it's good for me and for my career. And I also think it's good for him. So that's why we're doing it. So I always kind of have that in the back of my head too, of like, this is good for him. It's good for you, you know, but mm-hmm. if worse comes to worse, he doesn't have to go like, we'll figure it out. So, yeah. so yeah, sure. that's the, uh, that's the process right now. But anyway, how's life in California? How's your prep? How are things? Life is good. Um, I wouldn't say I'm doing a prep. Okay. Uh, you're, you're sorry. Sorry. Not. You're miniature cut. Remember you said it's not I'm really a mini cut. cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's so I feel cut? like that's what we're gonna, we're gonna catch up on that today. Um, yeah. I can give a little, um, catch up update and then I want to kind of dive into what you got going on too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, life's good. I've kind of just been hanging out. What is, uh, we had like a, it was like two weeks ago, a hurricane scare. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm -hmm. Huge. Um, yeah, it was so, and it ended up being literally like a drop of rain. It was, (laughs) it was crazy. I saw lots of funny like memes on Instagram of like, how the Californians are dealing with hurricane, whatever. And it's just like, I don't know, fancy people in like air one, like buying yogurt and stuff. It's just (laughs) like, it wasn't a thing. It's fine. Yeah, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. I mean, I won't say ridiculous. So like, I would rather be safe than sorry, especially living in Florida for so long and, and all that. So I get it like safe than sorry, hundred percent. Um, And it ended up being good. It was Alex's birthday weekend and we were doing a bunch of stuff. And like her best friend was uh, actually flew in from out of town and she was supposed to fly out the day that the hurricane was supposed to hit. And like all of the flights got canceled. So she was stuck here for like another three days. Um, But it ended up working out and it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, So, yeah, just been kind of hanging out. I've been still um, embracing the lower stress time that I'm in right now, um, which is, I have ebbs and flows of like, you know, I should be doing more. I should be doing more. I should be doing something every second of every day and pushing and pushing and pushing, um, from a work perspective. Right. Um, but I've been, I've been able to be more in the, the ebbs and flows and accepting, and it's giving me more time to like focus on other things, which is great. Um, and my video shoot stuff <laughs> is actually, I feel like I've said this a bunch of times, is actually going to be coming out. Um, like it's literally like in, it's like weeks, like probably like two weeks away. They're mm-hmm. waiting. They had to buy like a whole new computer system because the one they were doing was like, we're using was basically for all the exports that have to happen. It was just like not working towards the end so everything's ready to go it's just like buying this new like thousands of dollars worth of equipment just to like export all this stuff and obviously they wanted to upgrade and all that stuff too um so it's just kind of like a little bit of a waiting game to get that done but the official date is going to be probably beginning of october end of september so you um, have so much content that you're like melting down computers <laughs> Literally it's so, and that's the thing too. Like I'm in this place right now where like I, it's just like a a low period, but like once this starts coming out, it'll hopefully be, things are going to start picking up. And yeah, it's like two and a half years worth of content that will be coming out on every platform every day, multiple times a day in tons of different forms for two and a half years. That's so epic. That's so epic. And how, like, Tell us a little bit more because I feel it. First of all, I feel like this is just a good marketing ploy to get everyone excited about it. You're like, it's coming out soon. It's coming out soon. Right. <laughs> um, but when it does come out, you know, you say you say content, but like, are we talking mm-hmm. like exercise tutorial videos, like little information snippets? Like, what can people expect? What are they going to get? Yeah. So it's a lot of like exercise um, education heavy in terms of literally just going through like the whole body and breaking down muscles and how to train those muscles and like common mistakes Mm -hmm. and 
all the things like just like so many common questions and things that you would like tutorials are involved as well. Um, but it's really just like all exercise related, like questions that you would have about like how to do a bunch of different stuff and like going over like, okay, if you want to build shoulders, like what are all the different things that you can be doing for that and like mistakes and uh, tips and all that stuff. And then on top of that, there's a ton of nutrition as well. Um, so like common nutrition, Q and A's, just like things that I've learned over the years, questions that I get all the time. So just kind of like that type of content. And then there's also more like, we kind of call it more like the philosophical type stuff. So like the, the mindset side of things and just like some, you know, things that I've learned over the years with that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like a mishmash of like all of that stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just tons of different topics that are just going to be that's cool going out. So hopefully people enjoy it and learn a lot and we'll see. I'm sure they will because I always <laughs> learn a lot when we have chats. So, um, yeah. cool. All right. Well, that's exciting. Oh, yeah. I did not do the, uh, the update on my cut thing. Yeah. Give me Miniature the update. Cut. Yeah. Miniature so cut. it's been about, what is it? It's been about four weeks now, maybe three and a half. So things have been going fine. Um, I have like, obviously with any, uh, any fat loss phase or cutter or whatever you want to call it, you have ups and downs. Um, and there was one week where it was kind of a wash week. Two weeks ago, Alex's, uh, mom was in town and there was, it was the, actually like right when her friend had left too. So like we had, I would literally been eating out for every, mm. almost every meal for like seven days straight. And I'm talking about like brunch, mm -hmm. dinner, like seven to like for a week plus and I wasn't expecting that mm -hmm. so that kind of threw me off of course and I was guesstimating a bunch of stuff and I was like try not to stress about it because obviously like I'm doing this as like a little bit an experiment doing it for me like I'm not gonna let that stuff get to me I want to still enjoy you know the summertime and the the memories and all that so that was like a little bit of a you know just a wash for that week um but overall it's been going well the scale kind of has been trending down slowly, which is expected. Um, and this is one thing that I've really like from the beginning. And I think I talked about this before, like I'm making sure that I'm setting, like I set up my expectations to match my reality. And the reality is that I'm not trying to get super, super aggressive. I'm not trying to run myself into the ground during this time. It's not a traditional, like, that's why I'm like, I don't want to call it a mini cut because yeah. traditionally with a mini cut, you're getting like super, super aggressive with your calories and like, you know, trying to lose as much in a short period of time. Whereas this I'm getting like moderately aggressive with my calories. Like my calories are still pretty, pretty high for being in a deficit for my body weight. Um, but I'm leveraging the energy flux, um, side of things, which I talked about, which is lots of steps and movement. Um, and I also haven't done any like extra cardio besides just steps, um, which I found to be super cool in the sense of like, <clears throat> I have been recovering really well and my strength progressions through my training phase the last four weeks, I've continued to build strength on my metric movements. So things are still progressing upwards. Whereas typically if you're getting really aggressive in like a cut or mini cut, you at least just want to see things like stay the same. <laughs> um, and obviously training is going to take a hit and stuff like that. But I found that like training has been feeling really, really good, even with calories being up, obviously in a bit of a deficit. Um, and my energy has been really good. I've been averaging, like my goal has been 14 K steps, but I've been averaging like 17 to 18 K steps. Oh my God. Must last... be nice, yeah. dude. Must be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actively doing that, like actively going on walks, right. actively moving, paying attention to that. Um, and like I mentioned from the beginning, a lot of this, like the main experiment from this miniature cut is to see how much of that energy flux, like how much I can get out of it with keeping my calories relatively high and where, where my body composition goes. And so even just within this, the last four weeks, even this, though the scale has not been like dropping yeah. down, it has dropped and, and trended down. Um, but compared to what like my previous is previous phases and things like that, 
it hasn't, but like my, my measurements and I just feel better. Like I feel leaner or I feel like my clothes are fitting and those are the things that matter. Right. So mm -hmm. I have to continually remind myself, like the scale is one thing. And even when we talk about it all the time, like don't get caught up on the scale, don't get up, get caught up on the daily fluctuations. You still have to, like, it still affects you. So the more I remind myself of that, and then I'm like looking at all the positives, which I just mentioned, it's like, I'm having a lot of positives. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of an update. And then I have like within my flex fam, I've been, uh, you know, that's my accountability side of things and sharing with them. And they're really kind of enjoying that too. And that's like, again, the accountability of having to show up and, you know, even show these women that I'm guiding that like, Hey, the scale didn't even move at all this week, but like all these other things are happening and, Oh, the scale didn't move this week or even measurements didn't move this week. But was I actually in the deficit this week or was I just maintaining because I was eating out for every meal? <laughs> um, and so just having them realize too, that like making sure that you're, even though you set yourself up for something like making sure that you continuously remind yourself if your actions are, um, you know, in line with your expectations, because that's where I think a lot of people get wrong is like they have goals and they might feel like they're following through with the actions that they need to take in order to reach those goals. But is that the reality? And so always coming back to reality, always making sure that you're setting those, you know, expectations up and just being real with yourself. Like that is, I think, one of the biggest things that can set apart, you know, whether you keep progressing or whether you beat yourself up and regress. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to shut up now. No, that's great. This is, I mean, again, I feel like when we're going to talk about my project, like, I feel like mm. I don't even want to talk about it because it's so boring and it's just me, but I think that our listeners like this kind of stuff because first of all, I like to think that this is the case, but you know, when I listen to other podcasts that I like, it's sort of just like your friends telling you about what's going on and telling you about their struggles and what's happening. And it makes people feel less alone. And like, you know, these things happen to everybody. There's like universal things that we're all going through. Um, but also because I think a big part of the work that we do separately as coaches and with this podcast is like, you just have to keep reiterating the basics, the, the universal truths that people forget when they get stressed out or that people ignore in terms of like they want to do more sexy stuff. And so we have to keep just reiterating like weight is one data point. It's one metric. It's not everything. Sometimes we put too much emphasis on it. It's not the only thing. And, you know, mm. steps are the best cardio going for walks. It's the best cardio, like steady state is the best cardio. Like there's things we just have to keep reiterating. And, um, your, your update gave me a couple questions that I want to dive into, but one, just talking about like the consistency thing and do your actions, you know, match your expectations. And just today I had someone reach out to me and I'm, um, this is not like a judgment post or a judgment comment at all. This is just sort of like a learning thing, but it was someone who was frustrated because they were newly postpartum and frustrated with how they felt in their body and frustrated with weight that wasn't coming off the way it did with the first baby and things that they wanted to jump back into and couldn't, whatever, whatever. And you know, like, again, my basic advice is like, cool your jets, dude. You're a couple months postpartum. You are literally still mm -hmm. healing. Just focus on other things and this stuff will come. It'll be here. Don't worry about it. But she also was saying, you know, as she was explaining like her nutrition habits, and this is not with regards to postpartum and breastfeeding. This is just life. You know, I eat, I eat well, I eat right. You know, I eat optimally like 60, 70% of the time. And, you know, my tough love response to that mm -hmm. is that's not nearly enough percent of the time if you want to make yeah. changes. Like, and first of all, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the 70% good is versus the 30% bad. Like mm -hmm. some people eating bad means they had an extra piece of steak or something. And some people eating bad means I ate a box of cookies, right? Like we don't know. Yeah. There's nuance involved in this. But the reality is women, especially, especially women who aren't 21 anymore, and this especially women who are postpartum and have had kids and have gone through that physical transformation. If you want to change your body composition, 
you need to do way better than 60 to 70% of the time on the ball. You need to be like 120% on the ball nutritionally to make changes because yeah. our bodies don't adjust to, like we don't drop weight as quickly as men generally do. There's a hormonal component. There's a size component, um, especially if you're postpartum, there's, there's things going on there. But you, yeah, I mean, is your is your plan is your are your habits every day actually matching what you are trying to accomplish what you think you want to accomplish and so maybe the answer is right now i don't actually want to lose 10 pounds because of what that means for me what i'd have to change in my life maybe i need to actually just revise what my goal is right now maybe my goal is moving more towards 85% of the time and walking a little bit more and i'm going to see some positive body changes but Whatever. So anyway, all that to say is reiterating what you said that like, yes, it's good to like constantly like think, restock and think like, am I doing what is actually going to help me meet my goal? Is this realistic to my life? And if it isn't, we just need to make adjustments in either what you're doing or what your goal is. Right. Yeah. And um, I would, I want to add something to that too, because you said like, yeah, like 60% of the time is not going to be enough. Um, but I also want to reiterate too, and this is something that like, I, I'm going to stop saying like so much, something that I shared <laughs> in my flex fam group and they pointed it out too. And I mentioned this multiple times throughout the last few weeks was I have not been perfect. Like if I share my macros and I, I share my tracker and I show them, these are my macro goals for the week. And this is what I did. And every week it's never perfect. Like I'm never hitting everything on the money, but I, I've been consistent and I've been 90% there. Some, sometimes not, but over time it's been consistent and I keep showing up and I keep, you know, pushing myself, but I am fully aware that like, if I was closer to the 95% and I was a little bit more diligent with, you know, maybe I could have been a little bit more strict with that week where we ate out a lot. Right. I could have said, Hey, I'm going to eat all of my meals at home or, most of my meals at home and, you know, not engage in, in all the, the, you know, the restaurants and all that stuff. Like I could have made that decision. That would have been fine. And if I had like a video shoot or a photo shoot that I was prepping for a hundred percent would have done that, but that wasn't like in line with what my particular goal is right now. And so I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to make that trade off. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people need to understand is like, going into it, what trade-offs are you willing to make? Because mm -hmm. if your goal is to lose body fat and go into a specific dieting phase or whatever it is, or even a gaining phase, you're going to have to make certain trade-offs and you have to be okay with those and realizing that like, it's not forever, right? Mm -hmm. Going into a fat loss phase or deficit, it shouldn't be forever. And there are going to be some restrictions and things that you need to do in order to push forward right? Mm -hmm. In order to get on, like, you have to get uncomfortable to keep going, right? To yeah. get to your goal. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's also something to, to realize too, like, that's something that I've been uh, constantly telling myself is like, yeah, like, even just uh, this Monday, when I kind of woke up and looked at my average scale weight for the last week or week, I was like, oh, like, I have two weeks left of this cut that I'm doing. I could get more aggressive with my calories. I could, you know, drop things down and see more progress. But do I really want to do that? Like, is it really like, am I really willing to make that trade off mm -hmm. right now? Or am I okay with where I'm at? And so I told myself that I was like, I, I'm actually okay. Like I feel great. Things are moving along. Um, it's again, coming back to like my initial goals going into this and making sure that I am like, still holding true to that because it's easy to get, uh, it's easy to get sidetracked, especially when you're in it. And so that's something that I also, again, want to remind people, like, you don't have to be perfect. You're never, never, never going to be perfect, but set your expectations. M keep showing up. Don't like screw up Monday, Tuesday, and then be like, Oh, I'm just going to wait till next week. I'm going to wait till Monday to start over. Don't, don't do that. Cause yeah. That's a lot. That's a long time. That's the five days that you could have been getting back on it and still been 80% there, even if you're not a hundred percent. Right. So mm -hmm. there's a lot, a lot there, but I, I just want to make sure that, you know, people understand that it's, ne you're never going to be perfect. And if you have that all or nothing mindset, 
when it comes to anything related to nutrition or training, you're never going to make progress if you stick in that all or nothing. Right. Yeah. So you have to find that balance. Like what's enough, what's enough to keep going and to see progress. And where can you find that? Like, you know, that balance. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Does that yeah, make sense? Yep. It's just about being, you know, making sure what you're doing is aligned with what the actual goal and reality of your life yeah. is. That's all. I mean, we've talked exactly. about this. We've talked about this before, but people like, I think a lot of times people set a plan for like the ideal situation or their ideal goal mm -hmm. instead of like what's actually, you know, realistic. Um, one other point Great. that I wanted to talk about before I get into my thing is, um, and I think we have talked about this once before, but I'd like to maybe call it out a little bit more is the idea of a weight set point and like mm -hmm. people having a, a weight that's like their true weight that they're supposed to be at. Um, and what your thoughts are like, do you know if there's, I guess I should have researched this before we, we came on, but do you know if there is research to back that up or what are your thoughts on? I mean, I know we've talked before about how like I think it's, I think it's pretty common sense that most people have a weight that they sort of hover around when they're kind of just maintaining or living their life. I mean, most people aren't hugely drastically fluctuating from time to time. And if you mm -hmm. do, if you're fluctuating like drastic amounts, like from season to season or year to year, that's usually probably a sign of something else going on. Um, but do you like, what's the, what's the evidence or what's your feeling about like yeah. set points and how that relates to both cuts and weight loss and also how like your maintenance after the fact and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So I definitely think that th it, there is truth to like the set point theory, basically mm -hmm. where people have, um, just based off of your height, your genetics, your gender, right. Females mm -hmm. versus males, um, your environment. So your epigenetics, that side of things, I feel like everybody does have like a set point. Um, and for women, especially, and just, be, well, I've worked with a lot of women, so I can't speak. I haven't worked personally with a lot of males, um, but just from what I've seen over the years and through my research and just working with, again, all different types of women, I feel like there definitely is like a set point um, that most women have that is probably five to 10 pounds over what they feel they're most comfortable at. Um, and it's unfortunate, it's an unfortunate reality. Um, I can say that for myself too, like my, uh, and I don't know if it's necessarily like the weight itself, like it is, but at, over time it, it can change. Um, and I think basically the, the set point that I kind of, I think of is like, okay, like you're walking around at your, your set point that is where you feel good, but you're not your leanest right. and you always feel like you have five more pounds to lose. 100%. I think that is a, f that is like most females set points, at least for me. Like I 100%. always, yeah. Um, but it's like the more you come to reality with that, I think it, it like you can accept it more over the years sure. and things like that. However, I do think, and I will mention this too, and I actually totally forgot to mention this in the beginning of what I was saying, but I mentioned on my call last night with my flex fam, my weight right now is I compared it to this. I did this last week. I compared it to my weight last year when I was prepping for my video shoot. And I looked at my measurements and I looked at my pictures and just like how I feel. And I, even from just last year, I am leaner at this weight. Right. And I can see it in my pictures and I can see it in the measurements that I took from last year and a hundred percent from like four years ago when I did my first kind of photo shoot prep. And so that's something that for everybody that is directly associated with the amount of muscle I have built in the last four to five years. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, this is where if females specifically are not spending time outside of the deficit at maintenance or in a surplus for longer periods of time and focus on building muscle, they will not ever change their set point. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's something that 
kind of going back to the beginning, I do think you can change your set point, but I think it takes way longer than people think, like years, years to actually change that. Years of consistency, years of not dieting, years of going through the phases, being at maintenance, pushing yourself consistently through a training program that is actually geared towards building muscle, not just build, burning calories and high intensity training and sweating till you're dead on the floor and all that jazz, right? Yeah. We talk about this all the time. Um, doing that for years, <laughs> that will change that point. And then also realizing that, what was I going to say? Oh man, I had something really good and then I forgot. Uh, maybe in addition to it, I think it's something we've said before is that also a set point is not literally one number. It's not yes. 144 pounds. It's a range. Mm -hmm. So really like potentially where you think you look the best and where you, you comfortably sit could be the upper and lower end of your 100%. actual set point. Right. So it's not and it, yeah, and I think that's another thing is we tend to get too extreme. It's like, well, I just kind of wander around it this way. So I need to be like 20 pounds less than that to look whatever. Yeah. It's like, maybe you just, yeah, you just need to slowly over time, tighten things up a little bit, add some movement, whatever. And three mm -hmm. months later, voila, you're five pounds lighter. It's still very comfortable and it's, you can maintain it, but you've made some changes. Like it's not one number. Mm -hmm. And if you're above or below it, you're doing something wrong, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like, again, and, and I remember what I was going to say, like, if you have, like, I'm thinking back to when I weighed 140 pounds five years ago, compared to when I weigh 140 pounds now, my body is way different. Like I just look at my legs and I can, I have like cellulite on my legs at that 140, 40 pounds and like muscle, but not, not as much muscle. And I look now and it's like, way different. Mm -hmm. And that's from five years of dedicated, consistent training, not perfect, mm -hmm. but actually following a consistent program and progressing. Right. Yeah. Um, and then again, this is the last thing. This is what I was going to say. We have to continue to remember that if you are dieting, if you go into a deficit and if you're restricting calories, you are becoming a smaller version of your current body. Yeah. Right. You're becoming a smaller version of your current shape, mm -hmm. whatever your shape is right now, you're becoming a smaller version of it. When you spend time at maintenance and you focus on building muscle, you are changing the shape of your body. Yeah. Right. So just let that settle in. Do you want to change the shape of your body or do you want to continuously become a smaller version of what you're at right now? Right. Yes. I am just sending a really quick text message because my son is upstairs screaming, All good. I want mommy. And I just want to tell him what to do Mommy's to make that baby stop. Magnus. Um, it, think about, I mean, how hard it is to use my brain when, you know. I mean, I can just keep talking. You are, anyway, you are good at that. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Say, yeah, people have heard us talk about this all the time, but like it's not going to change. And I think the more accepting you can be of it. And even with where I'm at right now, too, like yesterday, I was like, I don't want to like, I don't want to diet anymore. Like, I feel good. I just want to go back to maintenance and push in the gym because like I know. So are you going to do that? Because like, again, I, this I mean, is an I'll, arbitrary thing that you're creating for yourself, know. right? Like you look good enough, I would say. Yeah. Pretty much everybody would agree with that. Yeah, so like, I feel good. What do you but think? So, so I only have two two weeks, not even two okay. weeks left. So you're and basically so, done. So I'm bait. So I'm just like I'm gonna finish it off, but I'm not gonna cut my calories more. Push, I'm not yeah. gonna get more aggressive to finish like finish off and and try to like push as much out of it as I can. Whereas I might have done that another time or last year or something like that. And I think that just spending a whole year at maintenance and seeing how good I feel at maintenance and seeing, you know, my shape kind of still progress. Like I've spent that time learning that and becoming comfortable there for like that long period of time that I didn't maybe know the last time. Right. So it's, it's also like you will continuously learn over the years as you go through these different things. And I want to talk about your next, um, challenge that you're your yeah challenge mm -hmm. that you have coming up like you're gonna go into it and you're gonna be, think back to all the previous ones you did and be like hey what did i learn from that right mm -hmm. what's different now and it's always it's just a continuous journey right yeah. and so there's no 
there's really no like, okay, I got here. I'm perfect. The end. Like, right. that's not, that's not how it works with anything. So nope. yeah. Embrace the, embrace the process as they say. Right. Well, speaking of learning from previous things, the first thing I'm learning is that if I have a goal, don't sit on my ass and then tell you six weeks out and then <laughs> we try to figure it out. Cause I mean, again, we've talked about my other mini, very mini cut that we did that I still think was successful despite a huge list of disadvantages and challenges. But basically what I've decided, and I've been thinking about it for a little while and it's just the right time now is, um, I have a birthday in January and I have a beach vacation in January and I want to look good for both of those things. And it's just sort of, it's the right time. You know, like I've talked to you online and offline for a couple of years now about my on and off struggles with, you know, trying to find time for myself and trying to get back to my, who I was before having my son. And, you know, and I will never do that because my life is different now, but now that he's two things are happening, I'm feeling more capacity and I'm feeling more like I want to challenge myself outside of motherhood, um, to, to feel more like myself, to look better, to feel good about myself and physically. And, um, I wanted to give myself the appropriate amount of time. So I'm starting now. So it'll be, you know, September, October, November, four to five months of a slow and progressive kind of cut, basically. Um, and that's it. Like, I literally just want to look good in a bathing suit in January. And um, feel good. And feel good. Of course, that goes without saying, because I'm not going to do anything that makes me feel like garbage. So um, the whole nature of it is that I'm doing it, you know, progressively and intelligently and like programming it in a way that um, makes sense with my life, um, makes sense with my goals. So there will be a lot of things that are different from previous like preps or whatever. So basically I am working with my old bodybuilding coach, um, my bodybuilding prep coach, um, because for a couple of reasons, one, because she already knows me, she knows how I work. I know how she works. Um, she and I just really see eye to eye and get along and our kind of styles are very similar. Um, and I'm just comfortable. Like I don't have to, I don't know. It's just easy to kind of slip back into that, but I have told her like things are going to be very different. I am not, um, cause I did get a couple questions on Instagram about this when I posted about it the other day, she's not doing my programming. Um, cause I'm like, look at this point with my own knowledge, with your knowledge, the programs we developed together, the work that I've done, like I can program for myself and I know what my capacity is and it's going to change and, you know, ebb and flow. And, um, I don't want, I just don't want to follow somebody else's thing. I want to do what I want to do. And for the next four to five months, my goal is not to gain muscle. Um, it's to maintain muscle and to just sort of like try to get some semblance of a decent, like strength training routine, um, going that I feel good about. So I'm kind of taking that out of the equation as part of the like body recomp. Like I'm not going to have more muscle than I have right now, probably. And, um, that's what it is. I just want to lose fat in a slow and controlled way. And more importantly, I want to set a plan in motion that makes me feel like I'm taking back a bit more time for myself um, attention to myself and my body and, and making improvements that I want to make for me kind of selfishly, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's basically what it is. So I'm not going to rely on exercise at all to <laughs> influence body composition. I am going to try and get my steps up. I'm going to try and do a little bit of cardio here and there minimal, and I'm going to try to go to the gym, but like in previous bodybuilding prep iterations, it would be, I would go to the gym twice a day. And now I might go to the gym three days a week. And mm -hmm. honestly, right now I'm not proud of it, but like I'm averaging 6,000 steps a day. Like that's what I can do, you know, because I have this many hours in the day and sometimes I have to work. I can't go walk for two hours. So I'm trying and I can do better and I can improve. And that's what part of this process is. But I'm setting really good boundaries and parameters from the outset that it's like, I can always control my food. I can't always control how much time I get to work out. So like the working out part is, you know, good, but that's not sort of the focus of what I'm doing. Um, yeah. And there's a couple of things that I'm doing kind of differently or interestingly that you, I'd be interested, you may not, I don't know if you will think 
these aren't good or are good. So my, my like caveat here for people listening is, you know, again, I'm not going to talk about pounds lost. I'm not going to talk about calories because it's not helpful. And I don't want anyone trying to follow what I'm doing um, or the way I'm doing it. It may not be the best way universally. It's the way that I am deciding to do it. And the way that we are doing managing food. So she is basically just, um, she's providing nutrition recommendations, like in terms of macros or whatever. And then she's basically just accountability, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but what we are doing, and we have done this in previous, um, competition preps is she's not giving me macros. She is giving me a meal plan. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is because to be completely honest, I know myself and she knows me. I'm I'm like an old pro at macro manipulation and all of this stuff. Yeah. She knows the kind of food that I like to eat. But the point of this is I want to start eating better and I want to start meal prepping properly again. And I want to start paying more attention to this stuff. And if she just gave me macros, I just find ways to put my crappy food into the macro plan, you know? And again, mm -hmm. for some people that works and that's great. But I don't want to, to me, for this goal, that's cutting corners. That's like, well, I can still just basically eat like protein bars and, you know, a sandwich today and that'll fit my macros. And I don't want to do that. I want to eat good food and I kind of want to take the work out of it. So if she, I tell her what food I like to eat, what kind of food I prioritize. And she's like, this is what you eat and this is how much you eat of it. And then guess what? I don't have to think, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, I, we've done that in previous preps and it was really good. I, I can still put the stuff into my fitness pal and know how much I'm eating. And if something's off, I can be like, I need more fat or whatever it is. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to really help the like newer, busier, more stressed out version of me to like not have to do any of that work myself. Um, so that's one thing that's kind of different. Um, what else can I tell you? And I'll, I'll give you my yeah. feedback on that. I think that yeah. I think meal plans are, are fine. I do think that utilizing them in someone who is advanced is right. actually a much better strategy mm -hmm. than someone who is new. Right. Um, because if you don't learn what foods are made of, if you don't learn the quantities of foods and things like that, if someone, if I give someone who's a beginner, who's never tracked macros before or never used an app or whatever, and they don't even know the different protein, carbs, fats, things like that. If I give them a meal plan and they lose the weight in whatever, a 12 week cut, three months, then what? They haven't then learned what anything. Gonna do? They yeah. haven't learned anything. They haven't, yeah. they're not gonna be able to go out to eat and know what portions and things like that. They're not gonna be able to change things up when, you know, the their kids eat the chicken that they had in the fridge for their meal five and mm -hmm. they don't know what to do, right? So that's where I think like meal plans can be useful. I don't, like I have meal plan templates and things like that, but for someone, so like in your case, it, it does make sense. Like, you know, that this has worked for you in the past, you're advanced, you, you've done the work, mm -hmm. ahead, you've already done the work and you mm -hmm. already know the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what strategy works for you. And so mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with like leaning into that, especially yeah. from a, a coach accountability perspective too, like a hundred percent. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And it, to that point, I, um, I, really shy away from slash never give my clients, um, meal plans because they usually yeah. aren't advanced people. And I'm like, you need to do the work of like putting all this crap into your, your app and like doing the math and like figuring it out because it will help you and you will learn. And yeah, you're right. Like she gives me a meal plan and I can literally eyeball it in two seconds and like know what I'm looking at. Like I know how much yeah. fat and protein and carbs basically I'm dealing with. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so that's basically it. And I did like, I don't have, I don't have a, a flex fam, but I do have my fam on the internet. So I did mm -hmm. post like for accountability. Cause I'm like, I'm just feeling like this is the right time. This is good. I have like this reasonable timeline. I have this fun, you know, thing to look forward to. Um, I do have like, I don't have a body fat percentage in mind. I don't have any, I'm not stepping on a stage, but I do have like a pounds loss that I'm like aiming for. Um, mm -hmm. because again, like the reason why I brought the set point is like right now I I'm at my upper end of my set point where I just sit around as long as I'm not like actively shoveling dozens of donuts into my mouth a day. Mm -hmm. This is the weight I kind of sit around at. Um, and I want to be on the lower end of that slash, maybe a pound or two underneath it just for a hot minute. Cause it'll feel good. Um, and part of it too, is me being like, 
I am a mom now. I've been a mom for three years and that's really mostly what I've been for three years. And I just want to get a little glimmer of that like muscle maven. I'm buff just for buffness sake. And I just want to sh- just feel it and see it. And that's yeah. it, you know, and it'll be interesting to see how it's different this time around with completely different priorities and different time and all of that stuff. But I'm, I feel like it'll just give me a little bit of myself back and we yeah. can share it about it and talk about it. And then we can talk about how I, I can avoid gaining all of that weight back mm-hmm. immediately around the holidays. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. And I also know that's, that's why it's like the right time to be doing it. Cause I'm not like, Oh geez, this is going to be, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm like ready to yeah. be challenged in that way again. So, um, I think that's kind of awesome. all I have to, all I have to we'll, say about we'll it. We'll keep, uh, keep up with it. Yeah. On podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. And again, folks can like give us feedback. Like, are they interested in our stories about our stuff or do you have others? Like, you know, I got a couple questions the other day. People were asking like, I don't know how many calories are you eating? Do you count calories? Like how much do you weigh or whatever? It's just like, guys, come on. It never, that's just never helpful information for you. Like knowing how much I weigh or how much I'm going to weigh in five months literally does not help you in any way. So, but you know, if there are questions about like the process or, you know, I don't know, meal prep stuff or like what we do when we lose motivation or focus or, you know, any kind of questions about this process at all, um, or any questions, but anything you can send them to us at muscle science for women at gmail.com. It's the number four. Um, and we would love to tell your stories. We would love to answer your questions. We'd love to hear from you. So please do that. And, uh, is there anything else you want to chat about? We're almost, we're uh, almost at 15 I minutes. We, yeah, I think Talked that's enough. Good. we want to shout out our sponsor. Yes. Gooder, our sponsor maker of badass sunglasses which i have not needed in a couple days because i think we got like the tail end of some hurricane who even knows anymore i've lost track but it's oh yeah there was a hurricane that went through florida a few that's it i think it was last week maybe yeah Yeah. northeast it's like all up in our business now i mean it's not that bad it's just very windy but yeah no sunglasses for me right now but i do have a bunch of awesome pairs and uh, i've gotten some feedback from some folks who have like gotten some with our our discount which is MSW, right? Free shipping. Mm-hmm. Um, and people like got men too, because of course they're all kind of unisex. Yeah. There are different ones that fit like different head shapes and sizes and stuff, but they're just very cool, versatile, comfortable sunglasses that are not crazy expensive. Like it's just yeah. a no brainer. Like I would personally rather have a couple pairs for like different occasions that I can like have around and like throw in my bag and stuff and buy like a $400 pair of sunglasses that I have to treat like, you know, a yeah. tiny little fragile baby, because if I break it, I'll be so, so upset. Yeah. So anyway, I like them and they no, have a I one year mine too. Yeah. Yeah. They have a one year warranty, um, which is also super impressive. Most of the sunglasses are polarized. Like they have ones for like specific sports, if that matters, if you're jumping around running or whatever it is you want to be doing. With your sunglasses on so um yeah i'm a big fan big fan so it's gooder.com g-o-g-o-o-d-r.com That's right. yep and, and uh yeah the code MSW is or? i believe it's slash msw but if for some reason that doesn't work the code mm-hmm. msw at checkout will give you free shipping and that's really the best discount they can offer because again the sunglasses are like really well priced so to give you any more of a discount they, they're basically giving them away so um, yeah, if you try them, let us know what Sweet. you think or tag us in your cool pics of your cool, sexy sunglasses. Yeah. All right. Sure. I guess that's it. We're out. Let's go eat some protein right. ice cream. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Bye. See you next time.